and just pretend we don't exist. Actually, if we can, we can actually just look at each other that little bit better that way. We don't have to worry about anything else. Beautiful. See, you're a professional. You know yeah. how this works. Yeah, kind of. I've done a. I've been on film once or twice. Is that right? At coin shows, like at nothing, coin shows. Yeah. I mean, you don't have any like line in a movie at the bottom that. No. No, none of that stuff. No, okay. No, no. I got gotcha. you. I'm here with Kent Ponterio. Kent, how many businesses do you own? Um, good question. So World Numismatics okay. is our main company. That's the parent company? Right. Our main company. That's the main company. Okay. It's the parent company, whatever you want to call it. But, uh -huh. um, through that, we do foreign coins, uh -huh. ancient coins. One of our big companies is Mexican Coin Company. Mexican we do. Coin company. Yeah, yeah. We have a massive online presence of Mexican coins and yeah. currency. Um, my business partner Corey wrote the book. I helped with it, and as, yeah. as did other people on Mexican paper money. Uh, we run the U.S. Mex show yep. in Scottsdale here in Arizona. Uh, we also have Latin American Numismatics as one of our companies, and yeah. we're working on a couple other projects as well. That's good. I, well, I mean, I'm just going to get absorbed right in here. I'm sure I'll just be like a subsidiary eventually. Right. You're, you're, yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. you're like the Amazon of the. Uh, of the coin world just sucking stuff up everywhere. Uh, I don't know about that. No, no, no. <laughs> so, so, okay, so people might not know you have a coin background, a history, a family name. I know, but, yep. but tell me about your upbringing in the coin world. My upbringing in the coin world. So my father is a coin dealer currently. Uh, my brother is also a coin dealer. They both work at Stax Bowers. Uh, I worked there for a time. I worked for my father in his shop and for his auction company. Uh, Ponterio and Associates for, ooh, I think 16 years. Mm -hmm. um, and then my grandfather was also a coin dealer. Um, uh -huh. he, was a, he was a doctor. Um, after World War II, he was a medic in World War II, started a general practice, and when he retired, he went to work for my father okay. uh, in his coin company in San Diego. And that's where I started, like kind of right out of high school while I was sort of going to college. Didn't really know what I wanted to do. Started full time in 93 working for my dad, although we like to joke about it. Like when I was a kid, whenever uh, I wanted something like when I, when Nintendo came out and I wanted yes. my- you like, worked harder. Huh? Oh yeah, no, dad yeah. wasn't gonna buy that for you. If you want a yes. Nintendo, you want a skateboard, you want whatever it is yeah. or, go you know, go work in the shop, go yeah. page a show. So that's good. So I mean, there's yeah. like, there's knowledge, but like I'm getting a lot of work ethic out of this. So, God bless you, Dad. The first, <laughs> my father approached me when I was 17 years old. Mm -hmm. While I graduated high school at 17, mm -hmm. and started college, and didn't really know what I wanted to do, and he said, "Well, you can go to college, and you could learn a career, and by the time." you get out you may or may not find a job and you'll probably be a little bit in debt he goes or i could teach you a career and you're going to get paid the whole time while it's yeah. going on and you'll be making as much money as your friends by the time you know yeah. they're finished with yeah. college and i said well seeing as i'm not really sure what i want to do and i like coins that sounds pretty good and he goes all right well then you're going to learn the, the business from the ground up go clean the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> I cleaned bathrooms as a kid. Now I was like yeah. five or six. I don't know how old I was, but it was at a gas station. So like, it was not pleasant. Yeah. I, well. But they were they were toilets you couldn't even clean. I mean, you guys come here to talk about toilet bowl cleaning. That's that's why everyone's here. So. Yeah. Well. But but the, no. But the, the lesson is right. I mean, and your dad was right. Yeah. I mean, it, it started all kinds of things. It started out like yeah. you need to learn everything. I mean, that's from keeping the office clean, cleaning the bathrooms. You need to learn the mailroom. You need yeah. to learn kind of everything yeah. inventory management yeah. and then you know buying and selling comes you do know you, over time right right do you think do you think that that really helped like a lot of guys would skip all of that like they just want to go from like i know coins i like coins i'm flipping coins and like they would skip the whole thing about like understanding different things that make the entire business run do you think that's really helped you in life for sure yeah. and i think i think not necessarily having an easy path where that's you know life's got to be a little hard and it's got to be kind of you've got to work through things yeah. and learn things and i mean you just can't bypass steps right yeah. so and i thought that was part of the process and at the time i was just kind of like <laughs> but like children resenting parents yeah, is like sure. a thing. yeah yeah 
but, but then that later they learned. They're like, oh, dad was right. No, I'm sure, dad. sure. That's cool. So what? So what is your your is your your forte is obviously Mexican, right? We do, do we we do a lot of Mexico. Yeah. Like I said, we run the U.S. Mex show. Right. Um, that's just kind of that was one of the things my father was heavily into. Mm -hmm. Um, in the Punter and Associates days, and yeah. hence I was into it. I collected Mexico for a long time. Yeah. I collected uh, Spanish colonial cobs, Charles and Johanna. Yeah. Uh, I've written articles about some of that stuff. Yeah. And, uh, well, you know, life happened, and I got married and yeah. wound up selling that collection yeah. when uh, my first, when my daughter was born, because I needed to buy a house. Things, things cost money. Things yeah. cost money, and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, my wife and I agreed that, well, maybe putting a roof over the, our daughter's head was more important yeah. than uh, having that part of the coin collection. Yeah, yeah. And it was kind of weird. I mean, something you put that much time and passion into. There's, was, a, there's, a, there's a heartache there a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. you feel like you're giving your kids up for adoption. But you were doing the opposite. You were keeping your kids. Oh, yeah, right. You were well, choosing family over coins, well, which I gave up is some a of good my, move, by the way, for all you youngsters out there who don't know. That's a good I, move. I gave up some of my kids to support my other kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. So um, now, do you have stuff that you tuck away for yourself? Uh, Coin-wise, not so much. I mean... Yeah. Look, I grew up in collectibles, like, yes. my whole life, and, uh, you know, just being in my dad's shop, and um, I've always been a collector, whether it was, you know, pennies um, as a kid and getting on my skateboard or my BMX bike and, you know, taking a few bucks to the mm -hmm. bank to go break open rolls and look for things that I needed for my Whitman album, yep. or it was baseball cards yep. or, you know, whatever. So, I collect all kinds of things yeah. on the coin aspect. Um, I mean, my taste in coins at this point in my life is pretty, you know, the things oh, oh, that I yeah, really you like. Want stuff that's like, it is the house. No, but I don't keep it, though. You, no, no, I'm with you. Like, so, I can't afford to keep so most of the stuff things I buy. That I love, uh -huh. like, coin shows is my element. I love coin yeah, shows. Yeah. And walking around a coin show and buying a coin and selling a coin, it's almost like those same endorphins that, like, yeah, trigger yeah. in your body, yeah. like, happen as a dealer by, like, doing a deal. Even if it's a cheap coin, like, one of my favorite coins that I bought yes. here at this show uh -huh. cost me eighteen dollars, and I was like, "This is so cool," because it what, was what? What was it? It was a Mexican fifty centavo, uh -huh. nineteen forty-three. But uh -huh. but it was it's probably like a seven or an eight. It's but just it, stunning. It's, but it's just stunning, and uh -huh. it's PL, uh -huh. and they're usually frosty. But yes, it, I, know I, the, like, I know the look. I've I owned like, a thousand of those things. Oh yeah, yeah, thousands. But of them. see, but this is what I tell people all the time about coin collecting. It's like, okay, I had a guy earlier today try to ask me about like what 20 coins should I buy right and I'm like well I, it's more about the element of understanding what a coin looks like so if you collect the same thing for a long time buy what's different so you looked at that coin and like someone who's seen a thousand of those and someone who's new like they're gonna be like well well I see those uncirculated everywhere sure but you know the difference between a frosted coin versus a PL or yeah. a coin that doesn't normally come with nice color. Well, or, the, yeah. the mintages on those are so huge that it's just it's just the ones that were like the early strikes yeah. are going to have that PL die, yeah. and the rest of them, like a lot of the ones you see when you see rolls of them or a bag of them, they're they're super frosty. And I was like, yeah. that's just really cool. Yeah. And it, a lot of the times I look at a coin and I'm like, you know what? I really like this. I think it's a good value. If I really like yeah. it, I've been doing coins my whole life. Someone else is going to yep. like it too. Exactly you know? right. That's my sentiment. And so. a lot of it's not. It's not so much like, oh, what is this on the gray sheet? Can yeah. I, I? I need, you know, I can make 10%. Yeah. It's just like, oh, you know what, dude? It's a really cool coin. Yeah. Someone's going to like it as much I as I do. I can't tell you how many coins I've bought without the gray sheet. Oh, and sure. And I paid too much for, and I sold in a heartbeat. Sure. I mean, it's really amazing to me how often that happens. Well, coins speak for themselves. You know, so. when, when, there's, when you've got something nice and something <laughs> special, I mean, the coins speak for yeah. themselves. Um, is, is Arizona, like, secretly a coin, like, mecca? Yes. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot of ways to answer that. Um, there's a lot going on here. We've got shows all the time. We're ever growing. I mean, the population here has exploded. Yep. Yeah. And, um, you know, you've got your show. This, yeah. this show's been great. This yeah. is the first time that this show's happened. And, I mean, I, I can see this growing each time it goes. And I think the show's going to be very successful. Yeah. Um, we've got our show, the U.S. Mex, that I, happens here. I love here. that show. Oh, I told everybody. Like, oh, it's a hoot. It's I love, like, so 
you know, niche shows are really cool. I mean, it's all about getting the right guys in the room and having yeah. the passion. Like, people coming to that show have the passion. That's and right. I, I love that, you know. It's not about getting thousands of people through the door. It's about getting the right people through yes, the door. Yes. And that's, that's what I liked about this show is, like, everybody that came up seemed to be a real deal collector. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, I specialize in Mexico, and I, I, I picked up... A, a few Tucson collectors mm -hmm. that are yeah. real deal Mexican collectors that they didn't know di didn't know you didn't know did yeah. hundred yeah. percent and I was I was like one guy came in and he he bought uh, three uh, pyramid 20 centavos because he's doing a red BU date set oh nice I had three that he needed and it, that's cool it was it was awesome because yeah, I was like well okay fun. now now I know this guy yeah, yeah. And, but that's cool but yeah Arizona's Arizona is an interesting place because like there's a lot of dealers here there's a lot of collectors here but there's also this growing population here and there's just a lot of coins that turn up here that or collections and they weren't formed here there's there's they've like moved here there's, like, yeah well they, I mean the funny thing is we're really close to Green Valley which is like historically in the Tucson area a retirement community sure but pe the, the people joke it's like well people come to die it's like their last stop before you know heaven is well, like so the so the collections migrate but it's like a numismatic yeah. elephant graveyard they kind of <laughs> that's right yeah that's right. yeah everyone comes out here for that so it's cool well you know what I'm super excited uh, that you're here and I'm excited about the US mech show I had such a blast last year I hope to be able to make it again this year and, no thanks man and if, if I can get a table I'm gonna try but at minimum I'm if I can walk it from well, I, I know a guy that can help you get it well trip. probably but but <laughs> i'll say i'll say i probably have to talk to your father first right so um no but like uh i tell people all the time like shows like that where you're really into the hobby and like people you talk to are really in the hobby it's, it's really worth going to and checking it out so so what's uh website social media anything you got going on for your companies and stuff uh, uh the main website's worldnumismatics.com or uh mexicancoincompany.com works as well Instagram is Mexican Coin Company, where we make kind of that's where we kind of goof off after hours and just kind of do fun stuff. Numismatics after dark, folks. Yeah, that's pretty much what that that's is. That's it. By the way, music. Where did music come from for you? You play instruments and stuff. Right? Uh, I play a little bit of guitar. Uh -huh. My business partner Patrick's a drummer. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, I, we'll, I would have thought Frampton played guitar. No, no. There is a joke though that is related to Peter Frampton, but that, yeah. and I think that actually got him out of a traffic ticket once. <laughs> But, but he's no relation. I, I, did, I, oh, I told those guys I was related to Michael Bolton. Wait, no, did I do that wrong? Yeah. Anyways, that's an old joke. Bad, bad. Pun. I probably got the wrong name. Uh, awesome. Well, thanks for coming to the show. Oh, well, thanks for, for having me, man. I, I appreciate and, it. And we'll keep we'll keep having fun in Tucson. Come to the Mecca of Arizona, guys. Take care. Cheers.